welcome to my first knitting vlog. This is simply a space for me to share the story of projects from beginning to end. You might know me as CC from Stitch Witchcraft, or you may have just stumbled upon me, but I hope that we get to share the journey today of the first project, where we travel into the wild. months go by. And so when I think back on the life that's knit into these works, I can't help but think of all the parts of the journey that I can't share with you through simple pictures. So here I am. I was incredibly fortunate to be able to knit this sweater into the wild as a test knitter, and it was my very first time working in Plotilope. The pattern is by Tania Barley, and it was beautiful to me. The process of combining the colors, the color work itself, and as someone who did the three-stranded color work for the first time, it was a little challenging, but oh, the reward of the process was so, so satisfying. This was also the first sweater that I knit for someone who wasn't myself, and the pressure was hard to shake at times, but I think it was a good reminder to me of all of the effort that we put into our makes and why it's worth it in the long run to imagine someone we care for, someone we love, wrapped warm and safe, or to see all of the effort that we've put living out in the world. If there was ever a pattern that was worth the effort, it was this one. down and to think about being intentional in the process. And it also helped to remind me of how special the little things can be. The texture of yarn in your hands, or simply small notions. The things that bring joy. It was my first year knitting and it happened in the middle of test knitting the sweater. So to celebrate, I got myself a couple of stitch markers from the Petite Knitter Wei Chin on Instagram, and they are truly special. You can see the love and care in both the packaging and in how delicate and beautiful each of these are. It made every little piece of the process just that much more special. Honestly, thinking about it now, it's hard to believe that I attempted so many things in my first year of knitting. Especially when we think about this Into the Wild sweater as a test knit, as a first year knitter. I tend to be a perfectionist and to get caught in my head, but working with this yarn and crafting it with such special little notions and details always just reminded me that the process is part of it. There's no shame in ripping back, no shame in slowing down, just the joy of doing something that you love. And Thinking back on my first year, it helped me realize just how much knitting helped keep me alive through the tough times that we've had. Helped bring joy and celebrate the little things in life.
sometimes I find it hard to balance the inspiration and pressure that I get from being a part of an online community that shares so many beautiful works. On one hand, I'm constantly exposed to beautiful yarns, inspirational people, stunning projects, and I have a chance to connect with people who share my passion, and I don't really look at a place where that's an option for me. On the other hand, I sometimes feel this constant pressure to produce, that I'm not learning things fast enough, casting off quickly enough, doing enough. And it's just such a strange thought to think about a process that is meant to be intentional and calming, at least from my perspective, and the ways in which we can sometimes get caught up in our heads and add pressure that really doesn't have to be there. So I had a day like this one where I somehow had stressed myself out about something that I was passionate on, working on this pattern, and just had a tough work day. And so I decided I could be silly. I could focus on me. And for my lunch break, I decided to pause and be present. I moved my chair out onto the patio, and instead of sweeping off the leaves like an adult, I sat in them. I got to be surrounded by crisp, cool air. Be close to my pet who loved me and just let myself have a moment of peace. No pressure, no expectations. And honestly, it was the kindest lunch, the kindest midday break I could have given myself. time goes by when you're making a sweater. I think it's perhaps the reason I decided to label my knitting vlog as letters. It makes me think of a time when it took sometimes months for a letter to reach you and the seasons would change and nothing could be truer of the process of knitting a sweater. Casting on at the end of October and suddenly December arrives and here I am, still knitting, time still passing, and so much in life has happened. At this point, I'm comfortable as I work through the pattern, and adjusting to the cold season is admittedly hard, but the snow brings so much joy for me. That being said, it also brings struggles. I can't tell you how hard it is for me to resist the joy of playing in the snow, but with that comes risks, and at this point, my partner and I both realize that we've fallen sick, and given the past few years we had, that comes with some stress. We're fortunate that it's nothing more than a common cold, but it forces us to slow down and take care of our bodies. Cook meals that are so roasted, special, cut herbs from the garden, and make sure that we're nourishing ourselves. It means that not much knitting is getting done, but it does mean that sometimes it's important to listen to our bodies, and in this case, we do in fact listen, and we treat ourselves to something a little delicious, a little special, but mostly we take the time that we need to care for ourselves and our bodies. As it turns out, that's the best thing we could have done. I admittedly lost a week of needing 
just rest, good food, and as much quiet as I could manage with work. And as soon as that had passed, suddenly not only did my energy come back, but my inspiration, and I was overjoyed to be working on this project. I quickly worked through the body, and I secretly made my partner test the fit of the sweater by having them do it blinded because it was my first time that I wanted it to work. Still, the process was slower than I would have liked, but feeling better doesn't mean recovered. At this point, I'm comfortable with unspun yarn, and the beauty of Clotilope has stolen my heart. Perhaps unsurprising given just how special this is, but it brings so much joy to find a sweater at this stage and to know that just around the corner, just after finishing this hem, I'll be able to gift it. I'll be able to see the person it was meant for wear it and everything feels a little bit brighter. always promise myself just one more stitch, just one more row, and sometimes that means that we finish a sweater in the wee hours of the morning, and then we decide it has to block now, it has to be done now, and I can't wait for him to be able to try it on. With only a few skeins of Plotolope needed to go through and to make this project, it was such a joy, and admittedly, I have so much left over. Part of my excitement for this project isn't simply the beautiful design or how satisfying the color work is, but it's the fact that this is actually a pattern that my partner picked. One where, during one of my endless Instagram scrolls, he happened to look over my shoulder and say, that pattern, that's the one, I want it. Can you buy the yarn? Do you want to buy it now? And as a knitter, there's no greater gift of a question to hear. So I bought the yarn. And that was before test knitting had even opened. I submitted when Tanya made the test knit call and was left lucky enough to get it. It's moments like this, as I block the sweater and I think back on the beginning, back before the seasons changed back before the pattern was even released and what I hoped that this sweater would one day become and what it is now. So many hours captured in time. So many hopes, so much joy. So many things learned in this project. All just waiting for the next stage of life. At this point, I know I'm going to make another colorless sweater and this will not be my last journey with Clotilope but I can't think of anything more satisfying than knowing that just around the corner, we get to see where we come. Finally, finally it's done. I go through and given that it's plotilopely, it only takes a little while for it to dry after blocking. I cut and weave the ends in after I'm done and it's here. Despite being sick, I was lucky enough to be able to finish the test knit in time. The project's done. A journey through October, November, December. A letter that took three months to reach you. And Into the Wild is where it should be. It's everything I had hoped it would be. And I'm so happy I could share this with you, my friend. Until next time.